Hello everyone and welcome back to The Odious Soul. I am Shannon Utz and today's video is going to be about Forrest Fenn's Bozeman Daily Chronicle articles. Um, before Forrest ever came out with The Thrill of the Chase and Too Far to Walk, he actually published a few of his stories, his memories, his things in the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. And some of my viewers have wanted me to kind of research and look at the differences between those stories as published on the Bozeman Daily Chronicles compared to what is actually published in the books. So today we're going to go through them. The first thing that he put on the Bozeman Daily Chronicles comes from February 7th of 2008. Now, we kind of know that the treasure was hit in 2010, the thrill of the chase book came out in 2010, so this is a couple years before that. And the title from the Bozeman Daily Chronicles article is Boyhood Memories of West Yellowstone Long Ago. Now, the first paragraph on the Bozeman Daily Chronicles kind of talks a little bit about Fenn, you know, about from when from 1937 until he was about 7 or when he was seven, he joined the Air Force, until he joined the Air Force, blah, blah, blah. He talks about how they spent every summer in West Yellowstone. Now what's really kind of interesting here is he does kind of not talk about how he spent the summers before that in Yellowstone at Fishing Bridge. So just kind of wanted to point that out. Right after that paragraph, he goes into almost an identical article to what he published in Too Far to Walk, um, chapter 4, Buffalo Smoke. He talks about in the 1940s when he was a young teenager, you know, him and his, him and his dad would wake up early and go into the park, um, you know, and he talks about that morning when he got super close to the buffaloes. Now, most of the things are exactly the same. Fenn does change different words, different sentences. I don't know if he wanted to keep it a little different than what he published originally on Bozeman Chronicles compared to what's in too far to walk. Um, and you'll notice that with a lot of these articles, when they're in the book, they are just slightly different worded, but nothing really major stood out to me. Um, he says in the book, compared to the article, he says father versus dad in the article. He says evening um, in the book and night in the article, but nothing really too much. Most of everything is fairly consistent. The dates are consistent. He does say that the buffaloes were 10 feet away. That's consistent. Um, and then right after he gets done talking about, you know, these massive beasts in Yellowstone along the Madison River, he goes into a story about, um, about the summer of 1942 when he found himself selling newspapers. That is a story that you find in The Thrill of the Chase, okay, on page 47, the Totem Cafe caper. Now, pretty much this is also fairly similar um, until he gets... Um, and to the point where he's actually working at the Totem Cafe. There's a couple differences here. Um, for one, the article says he has to get up at 4.30 in the morning. He says in the book that he has to wake up at 4.45. Um, also, in the article, he says that a wonderful lady, Miss Mary, um, was my co-worker who made the cherry and apple pies. But in the book, he calls her grandma. So that's definitely a big difference. He also calls his boss Frosty in the book, and in the article, it's quote unquote, old Fred. Um, so definitely a little different there. Also, after he, got, after he got fired and he was trying to dry his eyes, in the article it says that a cook reminded old Fred that there was no one to wash the dishes, where in um, the book, he actually says a waitress reminded Frosty. So just a couple little differences, but nothing major that really stands out. The book also has a lot more detail than the article does. So he definitely elaborated a lot more in the book. All right, let's go on to the second article in the Bozeman Daily Chronicles. And that would be from February 28th, 2008. And that is how the dude came to West Yellowstone. Now this article was published in his book, too far to walk and was chapter 19. Now I talked about this chat like this chapter in my video about the too far to walk where Fenn gives us answer to third clue. All right. So, um, you know, so if you want to go back and watch that, you can find out a little bit more about the story, but, um, he does say in 1962, 
um, Brother Skippy wanted to know if he wanted to build a motel in West Yellowstone. And he, of course, wanted to say yes and no at the same time. Most of this says a lot of the same things, except for one section. In the article here that I have in my hands, that's on the Bozeman Daily Chronicles website, he says how um, they asked Donnie Joe Heath, and in the book they just say Donnie Joe, they don't say his last name, but they asked him to kind of come in with them when building this motel. Um, and he says that um, Donnie's mother, Bam Hansen, was the postmistress in town, and his stepfather, Pete, made rifles in the winter and hunted a lot. Um, they were really good people, and I remember that Bam had the second go-away toilet in town, and I forget who had the first. So he says that in here, okay? Now, I'm going to skip a little bit. The rest of the story, virtually the same. He does a really quick little thing about Ronald Reagan at the end, climbing through the bathroom window. He does talk about how they charged a dollar more the $16 um, just to be the most expensive hotel in town. Um, but right after, right before his, or right as the next article got published in the Bozeman Daily Chronicle, um, there was a letter to the editor, okay? And I thought this was super funny. It made me laugh. And I don't even know if it really said who wrote it because it doesn't say who it is here. But let me just read the letter to the editor to you guys right now. And again, this is um, marked as March 7, 2008. To the editor, I have enjoyed the reminiscences by Forrest Fenn lately in the news. He probably wouldn't like to be reminded that we called him Bubba. I wasn't equated with him, but I knew his sister June slightly and his brother Skippy quite well. Skippy worked as a boy for Gene Carden's Cardin Young's father, Con Peterson, in the old O.P. Skaggs on Canyon Street. Skippy was lively, to say the least. And I knew Johnny, Donnie Joe Heath. Sorry, guys, I can't talk today. There is always some old crone who goes about correcting things. So here I am. I have to mention that we called Donnie Joe's mother Bess, and she wasn't the postmistress. She worked at the post office for Alice Hansen, who was the postmaster. Alice always said, quote, there are no mistresses in my post office, unquote. That was her kind of humor. And later, at West Yellowstone High School, Skippy's daughter, Alana, was in our first and second graduating class. She had a pair of little brothers, one of whom was Creighton, who shared first grade with our son, Romney, and who, as they all had to, survived a harridan of a teacher. She may not have been the worst teacher I ever knew, but she was a close second. I think she disliked little boys, and that class had about 10 of them. It was her vision that all plates should be empty after the lunch hour, especially devoid of the canned carrots, beans, and peas, regular fare in those days. Creighton did not share her enthusiasm. Each day after lunch, small desks of those who failed to eat their vegetables were put out into the hall where the culprits sat before their cold and miserable peas or carrots until they either ate the vegetables or had to be excused to go to home. Creighton never gave up. One day, as I was walking down the hall, there was Creighton, sitting stoically before his cold plate. Creighton, I said, why you don't just eat those peas and go back to class with your friends? He looked at me with those beautiful big brown eyes and said, but I don't like peas. Later, I heard that Creighton Fenn was the youngest licensed plumber contractor on record. No doubt he became interested in such a profession, having dumped so many cold peas down the drain. All right, so let's go back now to what he was saying about the Dude Motel and how they asked Donnie Joe to be in and how his grandmother was uh, the postmaster in the book, yes, the book actually kind of corrects what Fenn had got wrong in this article, which is kind of cool. So again, he says in this article, Donnie's mother, Bam, Hansen was the postmistress. But then in the book, he actually cuts a lot of that stuff out, doesn't mention Donnie's stepfather, Pete, um, but does say in the book that his grandmother was the postmaster and everyone knew and she knew everyone. So I just think it's kind of cute how this article got slightly changed because of a letter to the editor who kind of corrected Fenn. 
So, and I'm sure Fen loved to be corrected. I'm just, I'm, I can almost guarantee how much she just loved that. But anyway, the same day as the letter to the editor came out, um, Fen's article, Memories of the Past Enrich Our Present, also came out. And this actually is the same as the chapter in Flywater in The Thrill of the Chase, um, which starts on page 20, 121. Now, but there's a whole section in the book that isn't in the article. So this part of the article, like the article itself, doesn't actually begin in The Thrill of the Chase until page 124. And most of it is fairly the same, but there's some changing of words. For example, there's a sentence, a passing mood will bring thoughts of loved ones charging back to dominate a few moments of our time. In the book, he says, thoughts of loved ones floating by back, okay? Um, another thing is, in the article, he says, the space in a dark corner of our minds. And in the book, he says, in a space in a far corner of our mind. Um, you know, also in here, it says, waiting for another curtain call. In the book, it says, waiting for another time. So there's some words which I think he changed um, pretty much to change the tone of how he wanted the, this article or this chapter to come off in the book compared to the article. The article definitely feels a little stronger where the book has a more ephorial kind of feel to it. Another thing to note is when he's talking about fly water, in the article he says, several of the wonderful color plates are of places where I fished in Montana as a kid under the treadleage of my father. Um, or where I guided others for pay when I was about 12 or 13. What's very interesting is in the book, he does not mention um, where he fished in Montana. Now, you have to remember, this is an article in the Bozeman Daily Chronicles. So is Fenn just leaving out Montana in the book because there's other places where he fished in fly water and he didn't want to the book to be specific, whereas Bozeman serves a Montana population, so maybe that's why he did include it in this article. So the answer we probably will never know. He also mentions in here, those great places on the fire hole, which were personal secrets to me then, are now busy with the flourish of fishermen and women who cast a midge on f of, or floating caddis, blah, blah, blah. But here's what's interesting, in the book, he does not mention the fire hole. He just says those great places, which were personal secrets to me then, are now busy. So he completely keeps out Montana and the fire hole in the book, but he does throw them in one here. Why is that? The last part of this, which is incredibly interesting, is um, at the very last paragraph, when he talks about when my tackle box is closed at last and the caddis hatch is gone, I will rest through all of time and space, pillowed down and scented in, and with a smile that comes from remembering the special things that brought me to that final place, many of which were knowing you were there, somewhere waiting for me. Now, if you guys like a gypsy's kiss, you just heard the chapter about fly water. What's different here? They talked about it. Well, in here it says, many of which were knowing you were there, somewhere waiting for me where in the book he is not waiting for you it's it's knowing that Peggy was there waiting for him so why the difference what's different why why did he insert Peggy into the book and not in the article questions lots and lots of questions but now let's move on to the last article that was in Bozeman Daily Chronicle looking for Lewis and Clark now honestly the book has just a little bit more elaboration compared to what's in the article. And if you don't know, um, Lewis, Looking for Lewis and Clark is found in The Thrill of the Chase, page 59. Um, and one of the big things here is he starts off the article, and this was March 27, 2008. Um, God protects foolish kids. And little quotations. All right. Which I just thought was very humorous. So... Some of the differences you see between the article and the book, in the article he talks about the Hebgen Dam being built 80 years later after the Blackfeet Indians, you know, attacked the trappers. In the book it says nearly a century. I guess 80 years is nearly a century. Um, let's see here. Um, he also says that he rented a couple low octane horses from a friend near Parade Rest Ranch. Um, but in the book he doesn't mention the ranch. 
Um, he also does not mention that the horse's name is Lightning in the article, where he does in the book. Um, he also says that they limited themselves to three candy bars each, but does not mention Baby Ruth. He also mentions in the article that they took a camera, where in the book he leaves that out. Um, and also he does mention that he takes has the Forest Service map of the Gallatin National Forest, but doesn't mention how it'll come in handy later, as he does in the book. So those are just some of the differences there. Um, other things that I found that were slightly different, um, when they talk about the first day getting to the top of the mountain and the beautiful lapis lazuli sky, um, in the article he says, and I asked Donnie to take my picture, I was proud of the coonskin cap my mother had made for me as I service, surveyed the land that had not changed in a million years. Now, this is not in the book, doesn't say it anywhere in the book, not there, um, but it is here in the article. So you can actually find the picture of this book, a picture of what he's talking about in the book, that's there. So kind of interesting there. Um, other things um, is just really more about detail. Um, he goes into a little more detail in the book, kind of explains things a little different, but still the same context, just slightly different wording. At the end of the chapter in the book, he does have a list of notes that he made, and most of them are the same in the article. The only thing different is, in the book it says, mountains can suffer instant personality reversals, where in the article it says, mountains can instantly change their personality. Also listed in the article that's not listed in the book are three more things. Number one, tired horses will lie down with you in the saddle. Also not mentioned, you can never catch fish when you are hungry. And lastly, God looks down fondly at foolish teenagers. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. So subtle little differences, most of the places and things that they talk about are all the same just little differences. So it's kind of interesting to kind of see, you know, um, how the how the articles changed compared to what's in the book. You can definitely tell when you read these articles and then when you read the book, Ben is trying to make it a little bit more refined, a little bit more detail, um, and a little bit more careful, I guess, about what he says. You'll also know that there's a lot more commas in the book compared to what's in the article. So he's a little bit more particular about the grammar in the book compared to the article. So, did I get anything out of this? Well, honestly, not too much. I do like the mention of the fire hole coming from the fly water chapter. Of course, if you guys know me, that's kind of a relevant thing. Um, and I do want to say thank you to a particular searcher, Alan Kelly, who's let me borrow his um, fly water book from 1994. Thank you so much. I can definitely guarantee that you guys can expect a video about fly water sometime in the near future. So, again, if you have any comments about these differences, please leave them in um, the comments below. Also, if you're not sure how I found all the articles on the Bozeman Daily Chronicle website that have Forest Fen in it, please go watch my Google video, a video to show you how to use Google to its fullest. You can actually only pull up queries from a certain site, and that Google video will explain how to be a master Googler. So go there, watch it, and learn something. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to have more videos coming out soon, so stay tuned. If you are not yet a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit notifications, because sometimes... Just sometimes I do go live and you know, you don't want to miss that. And also hit the like button or hit the down button. I really don't care about that. Just as long as you hit something. So thank you for watching and supporting Odious Soul. Shannon's back. Don't forget.